as a race, we as human beings, we love creating things, right? Be it making food for the ones we love, or making music, or making the biggest companies in the world. We just love making things. That's an innate desire in all of us. We, we like to fiddle around with, with the things that are around us and hope that we can make things out of it. If you look at the invention of fire or the invention of wheel or industrial revolution, all of these came from the innate desire to make things. So as society evolved, uh, the whole equation of, of, of making things also evolved. Like you could, you could as economy evolved, you could, you could start exchanging things in, ex in exchange of what you've made. Or if you wanted to have something that someone else has made, you had to give something to them to, to get that for you. So, in this weird equation, the funny thing about the business of creating things is that there is no inherent value to it unless it's actually out there. The people don't care about it. That sounds brutal and blunt, but let me rephrase this in a better way. Uh, people don't care unless the thing is actually out there. Think with me for a second. Uh, if you look at Wright brothers, they pioneered flight, right? They pioneered human flight. But if they hadn't done that, would the society have missed it? Would the society think, oh, I wish someone had made flight? No. The larger section of the society, society wouldn't even care about it. If Leonardo da Vinci hadn't painted the Mona Lisa, would someone say, oh, I wish someone had painted Mona Lisa? No, that doesn't happen because there's no point of reference to make that claim, right? So nobody would know what the value of that thing is unless it's actually out there. So this is something very unique to the, the job of creating things, be it a company, be it, be it art, be it products. This is something that's, that's very innate to the, the whole uh, job of creating things. As this uh, things keep, uh, keeps going forward, the society progressed and creation started having value, economy and the whole thing happened. This is a very skewed equation of supply and demand. Despite the skewed uh, equation, things are still being made. Great products are still being made. Great art is still being made. Great companies are still being built. You know why? Because of the innate desire to create things. We all have that desire among us. So I am in the business of making music. But I'm not delusional enough to think that, you know, whatever I've, I've made, the impact of whatever I've made is, is as much as the names I've quoted before. I'm not delusional enough to think that. But I also think the desire to create things, that is stemming from a very common desire that's among all of us. In fact, all of us have that desire to create things. We have the desire to make things. So, uh, so I, I became a full-time musician about three years back, and I hope I can stick to it. So what this talk is going to be about is about the things that I've noticed on the way, the patterns that I've noticed on the way, uh, and, and the little pieces that I see fitting together when I look back. Now, I didn't see it back then, but right now when I look back, I do see those pieces falling together. So the reason why I'm telling you all these things is because maybe you can, you can also spot these patterns as they happen. It, it took a lot of time for me to realize that these were the pieces that led me to where I am right now, but I hope you can spot those pieces and those patterns earlier in life. So... The first thing is, the people generally like to help you. But the thing is, they do it without realizing it. If I make a list of all the people who have contributed to where I am in life right now, there will of course be legends in music who have made such brilliant art and have inspired me through their art. But I don't know them directly. So they have not helped me in a very direct way. The people who have actually been pieces in my journey so far and who have connected the dots, so to speak, are people who, who, who are my friends, who are my family, who did things without even realizing it. For example, I have a cousin who I'm very close with. Uh, when an A.R. Rahman album came out, I used to go to his place or he used to come over to my place and discuss about the album in detail. We used to obsess about each detail in, in each song and figure out how he would have done that. Or friends I met in college, we had a band together in college. And you know what the greatest success was? That we missed a third prize in a competition by only two points. That was the biggest success that we had as a band in college. And uh, maybe uh, even going further, uh, my parents, they just loved music so much and they started playing music at my home at a very young age. That's one huge reason why I'm into music right now. None of these people, none of these people did anything extraordinary. They just did, they were just living their lives and I was just part of it. But it was these people, it was people like this that help you become what you are. So, you should just look around yourself and see these people. They, they're silently there helping you and shaping you, become, uh, shaping you to become who you'll be in five or ten years from now. Be grateful about those people. Those people are important. It's, it's the small details that, that, that make you into what you are. And the second part being, you should create things. That, that sounds obvious, but a lot of the times we wait for the right time or the right space of mind to be able to create things. That, that doesn't make any sense. If you're passionate about creating things, you should be creating things no matter where you are in life and what you're doing in life. If you have a 9 to 9 job, you have a, you have a job from 9 in the morning to 9 at night, that's a very long day. 
that's fine. Come back home. If your passion is writing, write a paragraph, write a sentence. Or before going back to bed, read the greatest novels in the world, maybe 15 minutes a day before you go to bed. Just go through them. All these things will help you immensely. And uh, so it, I grew up at a, in, in a part of Kerala where uh, a well-equipped recording studio was, was, was a near impossibility to find. I, there was no recording studio where I was born. So I could not even dream of ever being in a music studio. So let alone, let alone making a career in music. It was a distant, uh, it was not even a distant possibility. It was, it, was an, it was an impossibility to me. But that kind of gave me a sense of liberation because, you know, uh, the fact that it's not even possible led me to enjoy music in a much more relaxed sort of way. I didn't have the, the, the weight of expectations weigh, weighing upon me. I spent all my free time listening to music and trying to figure out probably how the, uh, how the instruments were arranged and how the, the concept of harmony worked. Because when I listen to music, uh, I hear the same singer singing two layers on top of each other. How could he have done that? I mean, as, as far as I could think, that, that was not possible. So I, I started reading on the internet about softwares used to make music, and I found an open source software. It's called Audacity, and I downloaded it. And I realized if I have a mic, like a, even a stupid uh, a headphone mic would do, even a chat microphone would do, I could record my voice as one layer. And on top of it, I could record my own voice as another layer. That was a groundbreaking moment for me. Uh, to realize that is possible. So I realized all these composers are doing like bigger, much bigger versions of the same thing. I started reading up on more, so more, of, more of music softwares and started picking up on music theory from here and there. And the best part is, it's the process I continue to, to, to this day. So this, your job, if you're passionate about something, is to create no matter where you are or what you do in life. Your job is to just keep on creating things. And uh, third thing, success isn't guaranteed. Ooh, quite a negative step to take, right? But it'll also give you one more thing. If, if you realize this, this aspect, it'll also liberate you in, in, a, in a very fundamental way. If, if you don't have the pressure of having to succeed weighing down upon you, it'll help you enjoy your process so much more. That's what I did. I, 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 I never dreamed of making, it, uh, making a career in music ever in my life. But I enjoyed music as it came to me and things just happened. And that, uh, if you trust the process and if you enjoy the process enough, that's what will happen to you. So if you ask me if, I, if, if I'm successful, I'd say I'm not. I'd say success is always about the next stage. But I'll also say it doesn't matter to me because I'm content doing what I'm doing right now in whatever level I'm doing right now. If I hadn't turned into a full-time musician, I'd still be making music, but just that the scope of it would be different. Now, maybe uh, a lot of people listen to the music I make, but if I hadn't made, made it as a full-time musician, maybe 20 people would listen to my music. But my process and my, the joy I get, off, get out of it would be the same. So that's, that's something you should keep in mind. Uh, only the scope of what you do, will, if, you're in the, if you're in the business of creating things, the only thing that will change is, your process, is, is the scope of what you do. The process should say the same. The way you see the things should say the same. It's, it's a very liberating way to look at things. So success is an external factor. What you keep doing is the constant thing that will that, always be there. So the external factors will change, but your enjoyment of the process and your process will stay the same. That's, that's the most beautiful way to, to uh, approach the, the, the business of making things. And fourth point being, uh, you should make tangible changes and make tangible goals. It's, it's absolutely amazing to have a huge dream. I can dream of selling out a stadium full of people and singing my songs out and have them sing back to me. That's a great dream to have. That helps me sleep at night. Or maybe it doesn't, it keeps me awake. But it's, it's a great thing to have in the background. But maybe what actually needs work is that a chord progression that I don't know about? I heard a song yesterday and I don't know how he, how he did that chord progression. Or I don't know how, how, how technically that music was recorded. There's a lot of things that fascinate me in a song I heard yesterday. So that's what I should be working on today. I think if you apply that, it'll make a lot of difference to, to how you create things. Every day, there's a, there's a tangible way to, to make progress. Every little day, maybe 15 minutes is what you'll get to spend on what you love. That's good enough. You can spend those 15 minutes and still make progress and still make tangible progress. That's a great way to move forward in the, in the process of making, making things. There are certain traps and there are certain mental uh, blocks that you can get into. Uh, so the earlier you spot them, the better. If you're, in the, if you're in the business of making things, the first thing that you have to understand is, are you moved by the art that's out there? Are you still being moved? I realized at one point that I was not listening to enough music. I was so caught up with making music or, or doing my performances that I was not listening to enough music that was out there. And that's a very dangerous space to get into. If, if, you're not, if you cannot 
cry or if you cannot dance or if, you, if, if, if art out there doesn't move you, then there's no way that you can make art that will move other people. So you have to have that open mind where any sort of art can come in and make changes to your mental makeup. That's, that's, that's how it should be. Uh, so unless, if, if you lose that space of mind, you have to be very careful and you have to bring yourself back into a very open space of mind. And uh, you, have to be, you have to keep a co constant check on your mental state of happiness because being happy is extremely important. You should be able to look at uh, someone who started with you doing better things than you and detach yourself as a creator and look at it only as an audience. Only if you're able to do that will your, your, sense, your uh, process of making things uh, stay constant and stay happy. Sixth part, none of this is easy. So uh, all these men points I mentioned about these are things I really struggled with at, some, at one point or the other. The reason why I'm telling you all these things is because it'll, it, it might help you see that earlier than I did. I, I saw these things very late. Uh, these are things I realized when I book, uh, look back right now. But when I did go through them, it took a lot of time for me to recover out of, from out of these, these traps that you can fall into. So uh, if, if you keep, keep a lookout for these things, I'm sure uh, somewhere the dots will connect and somewhere the pieces will fall into place and uh, you'll end up making beautiful art. So to recap, uh, there is people out there who help you knowingly or unknowingly, but when you see them and when you realize that there, there are people out there who, who genuinely support you, please treasure them and please cherish them. And uh, part two being create, always create, no matter where you are and what you do in life, keep creating. And uh, three being success is not a guarantee and that's okay. That's a liberating. Take that as a liberation. Having, not, not succeeding is okay. The, the, the effort should be on making things and finding joy out of it. And uh, make actual improvements. It's, it's okay to have huge dreams, but you should also work on short-term goals that are very realistic and that are very tangible, tangible. And you should keep a mental check on your happiness. And you should trust and enjoy the process. And so we're all human beings, like I said, and we all have the innate desire to create. So if we have the passion of creating things, Please go ahead and do it, no matter where you are in life. Create beautiful art, create beautiful products, create beautiful companies, create whatever you want to create. The world is yours. Thank you.